I'm getting into the theme music. How about I know. you? Before we, um, before while while I was going, we we're both bobbing, and we stopped at the, the exact same time. I feel like we're very, we're getting into a, a, a synchronization. We are um, on many levels. I feel like our heartbeats are probably pumping at the same speed. You know how that happens in movie theaters and uh, Broadway shows, and that's why it's so nice to be in a crowd and watching them together. Is like I, everyone's heart rate starts going at the same. I didn't know that actually. You didn't know that? Yeah, I it didn't. synchronizes. Yeah, that was one of the beautiful things about coming back after COVID and getting back into movie theaters and whatnot. Have you ever done like trivia contests, like trivia nights? I. It's not like so much of a Canadian thing. I definitely yeah. know it's very popular here, so I, I'm not really. My my wife found a place in Brooklyn, and we've done trivia contests two nights now at this place called Vine Apple. Oh. And I feel like you bring and I, like that knowledge, like random facts. Random facts. Like you could be really, you could play well on our team. Oh. Our team is the newsies. Like, the we've newsies, had various uh, guests join us for a trivia night. Who's, we finished in the top ten. Yeah, I bet. Um, but like, there's like certain areas of pop culture, certain topics. Like, it'll just like you don't know. I feel like we would do well in a trivia we environment because we know very different um, things. Yeah, we're very confident. Like, I was excited trivia. when the category was European geography. I would and not rivers of Europe. Yes, that would not be not many my people reaction. around me were excited. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a category of like name these ten songs by the weekend. Oh, and you had to like play them and it, whatever. Oh so, wow, wow. Okay, yeah. so it's like a really rich mix. Yeah. Wow. And then like the you know top throwing quarterbacks of all time, etc. Uh, Grace oh says that her ex used to live right next to Vine Apple or Cap. I don't. I'm oh. trying to follow the chat here. Ooh. But like, Grace, let's keep you away from the ex. Let's keep you away from that neighborhood. Too many. I think exes should move. I think they have. They should be legal. It should, it should be forced to leave whatever workplace you met them at, yeah. whatever restaurant you met them. But which ex has to go? Not. Us. us, the other ones. The other ones. Yeah, that should be the rule. I feel it like seems that like should a pretty coherent work. policy, right? Yeah. There. yeah, but I think you know it's true. I mean, it's like the whole thing where in a divorce, like who gets who. Molly is making the programming announcement, which we should note to everyone that we have our own trivia contest. We do, here we do. Couch, it's an entire show, uh, as opposed to this very unique one in Brooklyn. Um, yes, you should watch. Um, tomorrow. Tomorrow's at o'clock. six. Slade it's hosted. Hosted by Slade. Slade. Slade, is, Slade is probably the best trivia partner. Um, you two, you and Slade would. Crush any kind of. I, I, I'm not sure I'm over there, Slade, but um, you know, we'll we'll try our hand. I hope we get invited on at some point to Chatterbrain. I I would love that. And Nomi is joining listening. us from Tel Aviv. That is exciting. Coming in hot. Coming in hot. Nomi Nomi worked here uh, she did. for a while. Now she's over at CNN. She left us, but she's still she's, she's still, still showing us love. Team recount. Team I recount. Love it. Thanks, Nomes. Oh my god! And we have oh, a Griffin coming. Griffin, come say hi. Griffin is Griffin. Griffin, literally uh, hot off the press. We have He does a our million script. things, and he's bringing. He brought us water. He's bringing us food that is being heated. BK um, Baby all day is watching from Mexico. We have a good mix wow. today. We have people in Israel. We got people in Mexico. Wow. We have people in New York. It's 11 p.m. That's late. No me. It's, it's late. No me. It, oh, I love th that. Though I think the show kind of gives you a late night feel sometimes. I think like, it could be late night. Yeah. I think we totally. But like where we don't actually have to be live at late no, night. No, because we can't. I, do what that. time do you go to bed? What's your bedtime? I'm a late night person. Like yeah. usually by mid between midnight and one. Oh wow! Oh wow! You? I midnight is my cutoff, but I usually like I'm like a ch unsupervised child, uh, so I go like I'm like gotta go to bed. I'm like it's not midnight yet. I give myself till midnight, and then once it's past midnight, it's it's like. Dude, so you're not. You so you do your best work at night versus early morning. You would say. I'm uh, Vermont all the Baltimore. time. Baltimore, like we're we're covering the country today. I we love really it. are. Yeah. Texas, um, that's exciting. No one from Canada. Um, so we know this is a safe space for my parents. My parents will never watch the show. I think it's not really? going to happen. I think Twitch is just never going. My mom, I told you, thought it was like. My mom is watching on YouTube. I think that's already too complicated for her. Mm. Um, so yeah. Other people from Canada, I'm gonna have to you to you're gonna have to represent because my family will will not. Um, what about your mom? Is she on today? I don't Debbie know, on? Debbie. If you're on, Debbie. You Debbie was driving yesterday, so she was listening as she drove. She oh. on the go. She also will often watch my IG lives. Um, like at Trader Joe's on speakerphone. Got it. So if you're in suburban Chicago and you're hearing in my this voice, got it. My mom is in the next aisle. That is amazing. Yeah. She is a micro influencer for sure, <laughs> for sure. Um, every, yes, amazing. So 
should we get the food? I feel like the food is hot. So and like people are like wait, there's so we food? mentioned this yesterday. You were at like a really cool dinner party over the I weekend. I got invited to a really cool dinner party over the weekend. Yeah. And in order to continue to brag about it, I have um, brought some leftovers yeah. that I snagged for Moshe. I even took the chicken. I don't eat chicken. I don't eat meat. Bri Griffin, come on down. Griffin, come on Griffin. down. <laughs> <laughs> so today we we got these snazzy iPads today to be able to. Um, <laughs> there's so much going on. We have iPads, there's a lot we have going on chicken, today. we have Griffin. We also um, have margaritas, which we will get into. Um, Griffin, I feel like you should have a plate too. Griffin, do you know how to? Late for that. <laughs> how do I get into the chat and Wait, see the no chat? Wait, there's no chicken. Here? They didn't bring the chicken. Oh no, Can no I see chicken. the chat on Twitch. Right? Shouldn't I be able to like comment or watch it? What are we eating? Oh. More of it. Oh, there question. it is. Nice. Very good nice. question. So Eric Kim came out with a book, if it's possible to put it up. Um, it It is an amazing book called Korean American. And basically he went I home. love kimchi. It's Yeah, so this is a Brussels sprouts kimchi. Okay. I mean, I'm, this looks like it's, okay, as long as it doesn't slide off. Yeah. Um, this is a Brussels sprouts kimchi. Um, this is a potato salad, so it's like it's a kind of a hit on like southern food, southern meats, you know, kind of yeah. Korean. And then these smashed potatoes, which with sauce that was not brought, but I understand. Um, but it's up there, and the sauce is like the best part. Mm. Basically, like sour cream with like sesame. It's like a, again, everything's kind of a mix, yeah, uh, like a Korean take on stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, we have some deviled eggs on yours. We have some fried chicken on yours, which I don't have. Yeah, we have some uh, zucchini, like more kimchi like some seaweed salad. It's just a fun little, it's a fun little situation. This is great. How do you feel about Nobody's it? Nobody's worried our mugs are going to fall off. The mugs, I think, are yeah, safe. Yeah, there's a lot We have a lot of happening. action happening on the tables there here. There is a lot. And, and um, how do you feel about our first food segment here? Um, I feel excited about it. I also I, I <laughs> forgot I was wearing my Invisalign, so now I have to remove my Invisalign on air. I was soft launching my Invisalign yeah. on the show because like, my dentist it. might yeah. tune in. Um, and we'll and, know and that. And these I'm two not hours are a it. vital couple of hours to well, wear Invisalign. Because my dentists have a way to like know the inside of your soul. So like the way that they press your don't. I feel like know he, the inside of your soul. Yeah. I mean, that's like some deep shit. That's like George W. Bush saying he looked inside Putin's eyes and saw yes. his soul. You feel that way I about your dentist. I feel that way about my dentist. Okay. Essentially, um, I he, he always has a way of asking questions in a way that implicates that I'm guilty. So, like, he'll be like, are you wearing it 23 hours a day? Mm -hmm. Like, because, oh. but then he'll look at, he'll look at my mouth while he's asking that question. And so I'm like, does it look like I'm not wearing it 23 hours a day? Yeah. And then once I think, you know, I, you know what I think I did? I think I ruined it because at the very beginning I had my design. He was like clear liquids only. If you eat, you have to take them off. If you're drinking, like, you know, colored drinks, like you have to take it off coffee. And so I took that as an invitation to drink uh, vodka sodas yeah. with my Invisalign because I was like, it's a clear drink. It works. So I, whenever I was out, you know, I would just drink vodka sodas. And so once he was talking to me about it and I was like, but vodka sodas are fine. And he was like, sure. If you want your entire mouth to be sticky, like he just gave me mm. so much. I just know the guilt trip I get when they ask about flossing. Oh, well uh, that's floss. all the time. It's like when doctors ask you how often you drink, you have to like lower the amount lower you drink. It. You have to raise the amount you floss. Yes. There's like all, and yes. I know that they, they know, know. They know. They do their own You're calculation. Lying. They're like, yeah. that's minus. Yeah. Why do they even ask? That's my question. Why? Just don't, if you already know the answer, why are you asking me the question? Just mm -hmm. so I feel guilty. Yeah. So anyway, um, I'm gonna take off my Invisalign. Okay. Oh. While she takes off the Invisalign, I'll transition. Um, so thank you for bringing this in. This is very lovely. Is it good? You didn't uh, taste the thoughtful. chicken. I have a taste of the chicken. I don't have a knife here. I just have a fork and I just feel like- Eat it with your hands. I don't think you're, I think that's against the law. Okay, fine. To eat fried chicken with a knife. Okay. Um, how is it? Is it good? Delicious. I was reading here, somebody said that Korean fried chicken came about as American soldiers taught Koreans during World War II wow. how to make fried chicken. Really? Um, I didn't know that. Mm, this is good. I'll have to fact check that, but I'm, I'm gonna defer to the chat on this one. Um, um, mm. Anyway, um, so, Thank you for this. Last night, I was thinking about you because we you did went event. to an event last night for the premiere of this um, documentary about Tanzania. Mm. Incidentally, where um, did my uh, took a trip there in October? We did our honeymoon mm -hmm. on safari in Tanzania and Serengeti, and Ooh. so connected through this journalist who does this stuff. And anyway, I'll I'll play this video. Actually, <laughs> I will I will hold on. What do we got here? Boop. 
Oh my God, did Ted Cruz respond to a recount tweet while we've been live? Is this breaking news right I think now? This is, we gotta pause your Tanzania. We're gonna pause the Tanzania <laughs> <laughs> um, What is happening, folks? Hysterical. Okay, so what did we tweet? Oh my God, drama. All right, so we guided. I'm gonna pop in here. Okay. Hi. Hi, Grace. Hi, Grace. How's your food? That's the food so is delicious. Uh, we'll we should send you a plate. Yeah, send in your order. And I'll send it in my order for next time. Uh, let me just fill you in on a little backstory here. Yeah, um, basically, we were in our editorial meeting one hour ago, or mm -hmm. I guess 90 minutes ago, and Brennan, mm -hmm. who's one of our beautiful, amazing, intelligent digital producers, was like, we just put out this Ted Cruz clip that was clipped by our wonderful Wire team, and we were like, start that countdown clock. Ted Cruz is about to pull up in our mentions, as mm -hmm. he always does. And what do you know, literally one hour later, there he is. Mm -hmm. um, he's mentioning Mickey and Pluto. He's mentioning Cinemax. And then he's quoting us saying we are hysterical, which we are, but not in the ways that we think. Um, Wait, hold on, hold on. So, this, so Ted Cruz is, where is he speaking? And, and what did what's he the say? context? Yeah. yeah, so he's, what... If anybody knows what this event is, I think this might be his podcast. This is Verdict with Ted Cruz live. Ted mm -hmm. Cruz has a podcast? Alabama. He's in Alabama. Okay. Yeah, That's Brennan. Right is his podcast. Brennan's um, in his podcast. So let's listen to this clip. And then we'll look at the response. All right. Lattice tour. <laughs> oh, electric tour. I, I think there are people who are misguided trying to drive, you know, Disney stepping in saying, you know, in every episode now they're going to have, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, Mickey and Pluto going at it. Like, <laughs> really? Thank you for that image, Senator. So, but it's just that. like, come on, guys. Like, like these are kids. And, and you know, y you can always shift to Cinemax if you want that. Like, like why do you have... It used to be, look, I'm a dad. Like, you used to be able to put your kids on the Disney Channel and be like, all right, something innocuous will happen. I, I think there are. So that's Ted Cruz being Ted Cruz. And so we tweeted that clip. We did. And uh, immediate quote tweet, which is hysterical. Leftist thinks parents want woke corporations indoctrinating our kids, which is just like such a meaningless sentence at this okay. point in our lives. Yeah. Um, it ain't complicated, man of the people. Don't talk about sex, gay or straight, with little kids. One thing I'd like to say before I toss this back to you all is... Ted Cruz and other Republicans who peddle this kind of language are always the people who are like getting their kids those those shirts that are like future lady killer, which is sexualizing children, but in a straight way. So for them yeah. to say, oh, we're not going to do this for any children in any schools and it's indoctrination by the woke yeah. liberal mob. I don't know about that. But yeah, there he is. It's again, it, it reminds me of what we were talking about yesterday with the veil in France and the laws that are saying, we just don't want religious symbols, but we're gonna leave crosses all over the place. You know, it, it's like, it's, it's using a law that's clearly intended to be, uh, re, you know, re, repressive to queer people, but then claiming that it's really, you know, not about that, it, it's just gaslighting. Um, and so I, I, I think it's really sad. What, and I don't still don't really get what he's complaining about. Like, I, 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 I mean, generally reference. speaking, it's I mean, Disney is now the new thing um, right. to, to hit on because Disney took issue with DeSantis's law, the parental rights uh, law in Florida that basically bans um, uh, education related to sexual identity, et cetera. For, for kindergarten through third grade, I think. Mm -hmm. And so Disney initially didn't take any stand and then liberals came out against Disney being like, take a stand. So then Disney said, we oppose the legislation. Yeah, yeah. So now DeSantis and the right are being like, Disney, how could you do yeah. that? So now DeSantis is considering like taking Disney's self-governing ability away. He actually mentioned it today. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like now being, and Disney's also um, in recent days and weeks said they're gonna be trying to um, create more content that um, I, I don't want to misspeak for Disney, but like whether it uh, includes LGBT characters or it's more open-minded content. Got so it. Now and conservatives. So is not about that. Yeah. The so now Pluto, conservatives are like Pluto and Mickey are going to be going at it. In his, I in his see. Parlance. Okay, he's afraid of Mickey being gay. That's what he's upset about. That's Mickey what being gay is, is yeah. uh, spending his time thinking about. Got it. Just to remind you, and then I'm dropping off when. French Disney announced that they were going to allow Minnie Mouse to wear a pantsuit 
And yeah. it was like a three day Fox News cycle. I mean, like, listen, like, this is such catnip for, for mm -hmm. you know, like the feeling that the media, Hollywood, and teachers mm -hmm. are going to uh, manipulate our children. Right. But corporations, media, teachers, like, it's like everyone, yeah. right? It's also at, at a certain point, and it's so funny to see Republicans go after corporations. It's such a very interesting twist. Um, oh, and, oh, oh. oh. Are uh, Chip and Dale not a couple? I don't know. Are Chip and Dale a oh, couple? I mean, and we've heard about Ernie and Bert for years too over at Sesame Street. For sure, What's for sure. So covert, there? a lot of queer coded stuff yeah. going around. Um, all over the place. Tell, that, that's for Ted's next podcast episode. That is. So um, wait, does Ted Cruz have a podcast? Is that real? Apparently he does. Why? Let's, does he have a job? Doesn't he have a? That, doesn't, he does. Doesn't He's he a senator a for one of our largest yeah, states, like, right? Isn't that? Uh, Texas. Sorry, but Abby was going to say. It's called The Verdict with Ted Cruz. He, okay. Here, here, Ted Cruz has a podcast. That's yeah, yeah, stand by. Got it. Um, so, uh, did that go out for everyone, Abby, what you just said, or do I need to yeah. relay that? Okay, so Abby in my ear tells us that the president of Disney says that uh, soon enough, 50% of characters, repeat that again, will be either queer or, or like. Oh, there, there is. There we go. Okay. So the Carrie Burke, the president of Walt Disney's general entertainment, has probably. Oh, and that's gone. Cool. Uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> it's promised in a company meeting that nearly half of all Disney characters um would be lgbtq plus or racial minorities by the end of the year so so really what that means is like Walt Disney's characters are going to reflect um the kids who watch them um but that's that's a because well yeah but i mean it, they it, don't it, it, right but now. yeah but i mean parents will say that like my three-year-old doesn't know their sexual identity yet so like right but but they're showed straight correct, kids, correct. Yeah, couples all the time that's and so, so we're people show them you know variety. it's it's a new thing yeah for people a, and so yeah People are concerned about it. Yeah, as you know, change as change happens. Change is happening, and yeah. Um, yeah, should should TV reflect changes that are already happening? I think is a good question. Um, how is the food? We are being asked by Elf King Glitch. Good name. Good username. Food's very good. I. I What's um, your fave? It's reheated. You have to I remember. I like the kimchi. I, I do think the like chicken the is solid. Uh -huh. I think your smashed potatoes are good. The um, sauce is missing. Um, is Imagine. this all in his new cookbook? All these recipes? Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah. Um, it's a really fun little, I mean, it's a bestseller. And mm -hmm. actually, like, you can't even order copies off of Bookshop. Like, you have to pre order when it's already out. Um, yep. So go get your, go get, uh, it's really good. It's super fun. Um, and um, I think we're ready. We can go back to Tanzania. No, I, I, well, I just wanted to introduce the fact that, like, for those of you who are interested in kind of a really compelling world leader, yeah. And the president of Tanzania is a woman, um, they call her Mama Samia, um, is her name. She took over because uh, the previous leader was who was a COVID denier. Let me share this. Um, there she is. Um, she was the vice president. She kind of came up in NGO. She's from Zanzibar. So if you're familiar with that area, by the way, Tanzania, huge, like it's like mm -hmm. France and Germany combined. Yeah. 60 million people. Um, East Africa, compelling history is kind of like cross crossroads between like Europe, Africa, and the Arab world. And so she's vice president. The president's a COVID denier, says a couple days of prayer will like cure whatever this is. Mm -hmm. Turns out, you know how the story ends. He gets COVID <gasps> and dies oh. and she takes over. Mm. Um, Fonda, one of her producers, has been digging around with clips. And I just want to play one of them because like basically he goes missing for a while. Unless you guys While can beat me COVID? to it. While he has COVID. Um, and like, we have a news clip of like, Tanzania News being like, we don't know where the president is. Before Mama Samia takes over. But she is the first Muslim woman of color to lead a country. Cool. Oh, here's, here's a news clip of like, the previous guy gone missing. Where is? Wow. Do you hear it? We can't hear. Oh. Remember when Richard Simmons went missing and they made a whole podcast about it? I didn't listen to that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. It's similar. It's the same. It's the same level. Uh, the Tanzanian leader, yeah. Magafuli. It just was very interesting. And so she made a point of like getting the vaccine. She's in this country that's in transitioning. Do we have volume here? 
Um, all right. Tell us so, about it. You know it. Well, it just, uh, it, so I got a chance to meet so her she, last night. You did. She is like on like her kind of U.S., first U.S. tour post-COVID. Mm-hmm. She met with Kamala, uh, Vice President Harris, um, and like has gone to L.A. to like try to boost industry and investment here in New York also, nice. investment in Tanzania. Um, it's just fascinating because they're trying to break out from like years of being behind. So their economy has really grown. And in an interesting way, and they have the Serengeti, and they're trying to crack down on um, poachers because, like, they lost. You know, it was it was the center of like poaching elephants and lions for and all rhinos for a very long time. Right. So she's been trying to crack down on that. Does the volume work now, guys? Okay. Yeah, someone saying. Uh, Benazir Bhutto yeah, was the first one. I guess oh. she. I don't know the fully has. Maybe she's South Asian. I guess maybe this is the first black Muslim. Maybe you forgot. Female leader. Anyway, maybe that's specific. Not this. President Magufuli has not been seen in public over the last two weeks, and there has been speculation that he wasn't well and had even been flown to Kenya for treatment. Despite go. the growing concerns, so, the Tanzanian authorities have maintained a loud silence on this matter. However, this evening, the Reuters news agency quoting exiled opposition right, so leader. The point. Tindu- Basically, it was national news there that mm-hmm. uh, the president goes missing. And uh, so she's not taking over. She's been there for a year and a half. She did Got this like it. big new special. If you get PBS, you can watch the hour special where she gives a tour of the country, World Tour Tanzania. Anyway, wow. it was fascinating. She's kind of a badass. She's like driving um, like on safari. Like her Got security it. is like telling her like, don't do any of this stuff. And she's like, I don't, I don't care. care. I don't care. I'm going to just do it. And how come you got an invite? What's your... So I'm connected to this. The, the, the guy who produces the show is a guy named Peter Greenberg. He's a travel consultant. Uh, worked with him at CBS. Got it. And so I'm actually trying to work with him on a uh, similar special with the leader of Bermuda, the mm. tour of Bermuda, who I happen to go to college with, who's now the premier of Bermuda. There we go. That's, so that's my connection. A fun hookup. Yeah. Um, I didn't go to college with anyone. <laughs> Trudeau. You didn't go to, with Trudeau. You, didn't, you guys didn't like go to we grade went school to together. Same, we actually went to that same university. The same, we went to McGill. Yeah. We didn't cross over because I'm a little younger, but. Yeah. You know, same, same, you know, whatever. Um, okay, that's great. Well, thanks so, for so, sharing that. So that's what I did last night. Anyway, and, I, I, she's worth looking into. Um, but I understand that you spent the day, I was texting with you earlier, and you're mm-hmm. like, I have this big commitment today. I have a big commitment. Yeah. Um, I was keynoting a conference, um, like a social worker conference. Yeah. Like, a, like they work with... Um, People, there, there are social workers who help in the prevention of domestic violence, and so I, and, and it was in Quebec, so it was all in French. So my, but brain, you were hosting remotely from here. I was, yeah. yes, from my little apartment, and uh, so I, and I committed to it before I started this wonderful job. So yeah. I am, um, it, it, it uh, you know. You're a woman of your word. I am a woman of my word. Yeah. Um, you, do you ever feel like you can cancel things, or do you not, or do you? Oh, like, I, it, like it's for other people. Canceling is for other people. I have to do. It. I, oh, I can't do. No, it. I'm a. Uh, you're canceling, cancel, but you you're also canceled. What do I mean? What did I cancel? Dinners. I never canceled on you. Dinners. No, I never. Plans. I came to that dinner and I had COVID. I didn't know I had COVID. Oh no, but, no, I'm not accusing <laughs> you of canceling on me. You just intimated last week that oh, like that I canceled. You sometimes like I know, to but then plans, I went, and so this went, is why you have food and you got Korean food because okay. I got. So I, you sorry. So you go through the canceling process, but you don't cancel. I don't end up doing it. Um, but it's some. But it always. I mean. It turns out good. Like I got I got good Korean food. Yeah, and, and, I get and to, so did I. And so did you. And so this is excellent. And um, but yeah, I think there are just two types of people. There are people who just like cancel and don't care, and then there are people who just like I feel like I can't say no if I've said yes, I've committed. Yeah. And then I I think I judge people who then cancel because I'm like I, I'm resentful because they give themselves permission to do something that I don't. I, I, I guess myself. if it's if it's plans with just a handful of people, I'm a canceller. I'm not, sorry, I'm not a canceller. Oh. If it's like a major occasion, like it's an RSVP where I know there'll be hundreds of people or dozens of people, I feel less bad about Oh Yeah, for canceling. sure. You for know? sure. Yeah. Siri Sofer says when other people cancel on you, it's awesome. That is it's right. true. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, sometimes yeah. it's the best thing. So anyway, what was the one takeaway from social working? <laughs> From social work, oh my, Griffin's back. Griffin's I back. feel bad that you didn't taste, you can take anything you want from our leftovers, leftovers. <laughs> yeah. Was there a, um, yeah, Brit, Brit Terrell feels relieved the number of times people someone cancels. Sometimes you're just like, oh, you're regretting, you're 
I'm with you guys. Like, yeah, you're it totally is nice. dreading plans and then they cancel. And you're like, oh, freedom. It's nice. Yeah, 95% of the time it's great. Except if it's a difficult friendship where you feel like not, not as important to the other person or it's uh, a date. Oh, there's like some subtext there. When people there. cancel dates, it can be stressful. You know, that's why, anyway, I won't get into it. Um, um, okay. So, um, so one takeaway since we brought up the conference with the French oh, social workers, takeaway from I the think whole the deal. takeaway is um, I'm glad I didn't cancel. I'm glad I went. Yeah. And I'm glad that this is silver lining of COVID. I would have never gone to this little remote, you know, place in Quebec. It, it wasn't even in Montreal. It's like another part of Quebec. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been able to because I would have had to be here in New York. So highlight of COVID is that we do a lot more things remotely and it worked out great. Yeah. It worked out great. I got to be with all these beautiful people. So we're going to talk about something well, we're gonna related to mask, COVID. Yeah, mask mandate, because we led the show yesterday with the announcement by the federal judge based out of Florida that the mask, federal AV transportation mask mandate is no more. Yeah. Um, and as the show progressed, as we got off the air, so to speak, is it is it the air if we're on Twitch? I don't know. As we got off the air. I, I, I spend so much time on TV, I have all these like references like, bro, the broadcast tonight. The broadcast. Are we yeah. on air? Are we off air? But, I like, think we're airing. We're streaming. I think we're, it's streaming. But streaming in the, the air? Air? Is streaming we're via. streaming in the air. We're... We'll let you guys decide. Yes. Nomi loves social workers. I'm, I think Nomi is my favorite. It, Nomi should be in the chat every every day. Nomi on Tel Aviv I, time. Yes. Like, yes. I hope you had a couple drinks, Nomi. I hope I you went to, like, a good bar in Tel Aviv. And had speaking a couple of drinks, drinks. Should, we do, should we do this? Oh, speaking of drinks, Sunday? it's happy Why hour. are these here? <laughs> so, so, so speaking of things that, like, will cause less fights in air, these, like, if you're drinking, you don't have to wear a mask anymore. Hopefully there'll be less fights. This yeah. drink... Uh, was sent to Liz by the good folks at Betches Media. Mm -hmm. It's their new beverage. Yes. Uh, faux pas. Faux pas. And we're still taking ideas for the name of our beverage that we wish to have. The only one we have so far is buffering. Buffer buffering. Buffering. But maybe there's some uh, concoction of our names or something. Cheers. Loche. Loche. <laughs> Miz. Hey, would you like to drink some Miz? Does it I sound right? I like Miz. It sounds feminist. Miz. And it sounds fresh. Ooh. Okay, so this is... Uh, plank drink. Um, Spicy mango margarita. Guys, it only took us one week uh -huh. on air. I'm going to keep using that phrase To start drinking. <laughs> to start drinking. Plank drink is a name. I feel like this could be our, Ms. our Yoda. Uh, mm -hmm. Ms. Lo Ms. Loesch. Ms. Loesch. Is Actually, Ms. Loesch sounds really good. Spicy, spicy mango margarita. Spicy margarita. Um, margarita. Please send us drinks so and <laughs> Korean food. We will... Abby, we'll do we have any, the, the, the first thing didn't work. Do we have any of the videos of like them announcing on uh, the planes yesterday? Okay, great. Oh yeah, let's, that's fun. Let's play one. It's the end of the mask. The Biden administration announced that the Transportation Security Administration will no longer enforce the federal mandate requiring masks in all U.S. airports and on board aircraft. Uh, <laughs> And, and there you have it. North Airlines, um, I haven't seen any airlines that are maintaining it. It's optional for everyone. Um, Uber today announced that they um, are no longer mandating masks. Oh, really? Um, okay. Almost everybody. There were a lot of cheering. Uh, there are also some uh, concerned folks who um, feel, who are, you know, still either immunocompromised, mm -hmm. et cetera, who are concerned about the the loss of the mandate. Yeah, and Mark, oh, Mark Markham Nolan. is saying they announced the end of the mask mandate on my JetBlue flight last night. Mild applause, 90% get masks on. You know what's so... Yeah, I know oh, we have so, a video. We have more videos. Yeah, yeah let's keep playing yeah. videos. So, Markham, that's interesting that that happened. I also kind of feel like there was a summer last spring. Sorry, there was a weekend. I'm like, look, I've had one <laughs> drink of this faux pas. Um, there was a weekend last spring in New York where, like, people started... I, I remember walking down the street and, like, People are starting to not wear their masks outside, yeah. and they're all kind of looking at each other like, wait, are you Can taking it, it off? Are you taking Can it off? It? And I feel like that's the plane right now. Yeah. Right? I, maybe hot, plain summer, hot back summer. We're going to get, I, we, need, we need some better ideas on that you, take. Have you ever met a guy in a plane? I have, actually. Pre -mask. I really have. Pre-mask. Pre-mask. Yeah. I, you know who? We can reveal identities. No, no, let's not. Um, he's <laughs> that's, that's our tease of the next story, Libs of TikTok. We're gonna reveal identities. So let's go ahead. Let's dox Deep tease. all let's, my let's exes. dox all the people you've ever um, met. Yeah. You know what's funny? Actually, I'll turn so long story short, he's the brother of a very prominent Instagram account that I won't name. And okay. and the plane has stopped and we're kind of 
I think it was kind of cool. Like it was kind of like I was like, we said plane is stopped on the ground. The plane was stopped, but we were yeah. waiting, and then we started talking, and then whatever. And I was like, oh, you're this thing, and then we tra we traded numbers. Then he texted me, and I didn't get the text, which. Nine out of time, you know, when you're dating at the beginning and then, and then you're like, you send something and then they don't re respond. It's and a big you're deal. Like, Maybe they didn't get my text. It's like, they got it. They, they definitely got it. But this was a case of he actually had not got it. Yeah. And so then we decided once we knew about that snafu, we were like, we're never going to text. We're only going to call each other. Okay. And so that was a fun thing that we did where we only called to plan dates and then we went on dates. And then it was like 2015 and then like the Muslim ban happened, Donald Trump announced it. And then I realized it was a Trump voter. And then we had that fight. And then it was kind of- Oh, this got in the way of the love. End. Yeah, it really did. Um, and then, you know, he's happy now. I'm happy now. We've moved oh. on to better things, but okay. we still follow each other on Instagram. And I'm very as, happy for him. As one does. As one does. No, that's a big deal. Following. Yeah. Let's land yeah. this plane story that I derailed. Well, no, so, you didn't derail it. I asked you whether you met somebody because I you think met somebody? on a plane, um, I've met like like professional connections and networking. I've never like Ooh. met a love interest on a plane. I feel like that's the so. moment when when there's a hot person sitting next to you on a flight, like who's your age. Yeah. It's kind of your moment. It, yeah. It's it's a romantic comedy when you happen. So bottom line on on the plane thing. Yeah. Some people say they're going to like cancel travel, which, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. And a lot of people are saying like, okay, we have the vaccine. We're down to Omicron. The mask mandate was pretty much gone. Are you bottom line going to still wear a mask on a plane? What I'm do you think? Uh, I was, I was, I was a mask wearer before it happened, but honestly it's for other people's sake. Cause yeah. I get everything and I will transmit yeah. it to you. So I'm, I don't know what people are thinking in the yeah, chat. What's the chat, what's the chat um, saying? But, um, in terms of mask wearing. Oh, you dated a MAGA bro, Christian ass. People are hey, very interested. Hey, this is, by hey, the way, guys. It was a funny, you know what was funny is that his friends, I, we were FaceTiming, I was like at the Google, I was like at a museum or something, I don't know why we were FaceTiming. And I told him like, I can't do this. Like you're like, you you can't, like I, this is not gonna work. And then his friend came into the the FaceTime yeah. and then he, and he, and he was like, she's a broke up with me, because I'm a Trump or whatever. And then the guy was like, you have to say you're from Marco Rubio. Like, dude, you can't say that. Like at the time it was still kind of still not, but um, it didn't work. It didn't work out. And then we didn't date. So we didn't continue dating after that moment. Um, I, we're going to have our a good friend and contributor, Sopan Deb, join us soon. You guys can pop him in whenever you want because um, I know he'll have thoughts on all of this. Yes. Uh, and Grace says there's no one hot enough to get me. Okay, we're done. Hey, Sopan. <laughs> what, a, what an intro. What an intro. I'm still so, stuck on uh, meeting someone on the plane. I want to get. To no, have you ever met anyone? Well, soap, soap, soap is getting married this weekend. You are Con early congrats, my friend. Um, and they met via Twitter. Yes, which is the second best way to meet behind plane. I thought uh, peak peak motions. I never found love on a plane, but I have found professional connections. <laughs> 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 but oh, so what? So Moshe saying he has met love on the plane. He has had love. On the plane. It's so, really so it's early to declare peak Moshe in this. In this show. <laughs> I think that is we really have good. To it's go really to. good. But no, Soap knows me well enough. Yeah. We go. We go back. We go back. To People the... are so happy um, about about Soap getting married. So but before we get to serious subjects, Extremely let's get to the most serious subject. You're about to uh, make a lifetime commitment this weekend. Um, we, give us the details. Where is the wedding? Will, will I read invited? about it in Politico Playbook the next morning? Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm in Charleston. Uh, that's where my fiance, Wesley's family, is from. Um, the wedding is this weekend. We have a wedding band for those of you who are um, in the mood to check in. I'm a concert guy, so I wanted to have, we wanted to have some live music. Um, our good friends are officiating um, the wedding. So, um, yeah, no, we're really excited excited um at least that's what i've been told to say i'm no i'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. uh no we're really excited and um she's standing and, in the uh, corner <laughs> yeah wine no uh, uh no it's, been, <laughs> it's um it's it's very exciting um all our, it doesn't feel real uh, you know it, it's weird because the wedding is this saturday but it doesn't feel real yet because it's only tuesday and our friends don't start getting in until tonight and tomorrow so and and so it still feels like this kind of Distant thing. We were supposed to get married a year ago, but we pushed it back because mm -hmm. of COVID. So it's been this like almost more like two and a half year engagement. So now it's you know it now it's finally like time. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel like it yet. If that makes sense, I think it'll start feeling like it when everyone is is here and um and and we're all together and and all that stuff. 
What does it feel different after you're married? Uh, um, well, first of all, I'll say, I mean, no, I mean, if, if you, I, as far as the relationship's concerned, like it didn't feel different. Like I, I think the stress of the wedding mm -hmm. um, is gone and nice, but you know, as far as day-to-day -day relationship, like we're already living together, we're already whatever. Same like same. they didn't, you know, like you got to make sure to submit your wedding application to New York State within a couple of weeks. So, man, you got to make sure the whole thing. Um, <laughs> but I will, I will tell you something. So I got married in July. Is find like moments to yourself, um, like with each other, away mm. from everybody, to like take it in, Aww, even like do idea. like shoot little videos, like selfie, like yeah, just those yourself. moments, yeah. and then something my wife had me do the night we got back from our wedding was like doing like a little again video diary of Aww. like how we felt, oh. immediate that's memories, etc. Because even looking back at it, it's having been a year, we look back at it and you're like, oh, that's like so it's it captures that moment. So I would just say, right. I don't have to tell a journalist this, but I will tell a journalist this: like capture your capture your story as much as possible. <laughs> My big, uh, to, to the extent that I have any stress, and my biggest nightmare is a friend of mine told me he went to a wedding, and, and I guess there's a custom for some couples where they exchange gifts the morning of the wedding, which I'd never heard of. I didn't know this was a thing, and we're not doing that. But, but what happened was the bride got a gift for the groom, and the groom did not know they were doing this. So oh. the morning of the wedding, oh. the, bride, oh. the bride's father goes to uh, the groom and says, hey, so what did you get my daughter, you know, for the morning of, you know, thing? and he goes, oh, 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 and oh, yeah, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. it's a surprise, and what he does, he sends, he sends the, uh, uh, the best man or someone in the, uh, one of the groomsmen out to the Apple store to get a pair of AirPods, and that was the that was the game. And that's my big nightmare that I'm gonna show up to the wedding and the big, there's some custom. You did you did you did you do the thing that you know you're supposed to do? And you know. But you've addressed this. Oh. You've addressed this. No no gift is expected this weekend. Or do you have no, a? Changing, you have, no no gift today. We're do you have a pair of pods just in case? Yeah, just bring them. Yeah. <laughs> we're exchanging. Um, we're exchanging. Yeah, this this is it right here. No, uh, we're exchanging. <laughs> we're, we're exchanging uh, letters. Oh, oh, very sweet. I can't. We, That's so sweet. We did that. We did. Yeah. Um, yeah. So th there's so many links to what we wanted to talk to you about, yeah. which is this um, BuzzFeed news article about is being single not aesthetic anymore? So there's the, even the term aesthetic, right, is the big thing. <laughs> On Instagram. So, by the way, Steve Morris in lieu of gifts, please donate to CNN Plus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. Um, but CNN have, Plus needs it. Yes. Yeah. Um, they need AirPods. Um, so basically online, have you heard of the soft launch, the boyfriend soft launch? Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Do you know what I'm talking about? It was the I boyfriend it. soft this launch. Is your, your, this is so um, fun. Okay. Oh, Liz, come on, Liz. Tell me much about it. Your Tell the boyfriend soft launch is when you... When you, I mean, it's literally what it sounds like, which is when you post a picture of your uh, significant other on on Instagram, and and you just call it a soft launch. It's your first time appearing together on social no, media. No, but no. but the OGs know that in in my day, growing up, the soft launch was putting uh, sappy song lyrics in your AOL Instant Messenger profile. Yeah, that was that was the soft. That was oh, soft the I am the, the AOL I am uh, bio. Is is where you launch the relationship, but I'm gonna come and then back. that progressed to Facebook status. Are we worthy in a relationship? In a relationship it's with, complicated. With, that was yeah. like 04 to 2010. That was big. Yeah, that was big. Um, but this is wrong. This is incorrect. So, man, the soft launch is you don't post a photo of them. You post a photo of like their hand. Like it's like. Uh, oh, sorry. You're right. Oh, like sorry. the hand, oh. or like there's just like um his back, but you don't see his face, and and it's Super very cagey. Mm. It's not like here's a photo of my boyfriend's back. It's like love the summer sun. You know, it's just like <laughs> it's a of like, found love, and you know, it's just and then and then the real friends will look at the photo, being like, wait, who? Who is this? Like, and then everyone, yeah. and then influencers have been doing it. And then they do, they can do that for months. Like yeah. there's this woman I met at, at an event and her name is Anna Ixter. And she did it. She was dating this other influencer. Yeah. And then people were like speculating about whose hand it was, looking at different videos of the other guy. And, and, yeah. vote, and so it becomes like a whole story. Sari's done this and she doesn't even know she was doing <gasps> it, she says. You, what did you post, Sorry. <laughs> 
Doesn't get much softer than that. Doesn't get much softer than that. <laughs> yes, yes, that yes. That's the misinformation of yes. um, the soft launch. Wow. Whereas disinformation of soft launch is knowing mm. the soft launch to like take it back to some real news. Wait, so the single non-aesthetic, explain what this whole story. So Penn, do you want to explain yeah, tell what us you saw about in the story? It. Well, it's, it, it's basically, you know, it, it basically goes into the performativeness that you have to be in as a, as a relationship that you have to engage in. Well, I should say you have to, that, you, that a lot of, you know, younger people, I think, I shouldn't even say younger people. I think people that are active on social media choose to engage in. So that's, you know, whether it's soft launching, whether it's, you know, how many pictures of your, you know, dates that you want to put up on Instagram, how carefully curated they are. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a weird, it's a weird thing to date in 2022, right? Because huh. if you're not just dating each other, you're also dating for public consumption in a way that was, you weren't doing 10, 20 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Now, like, it, <laughs> I, can't, I keep, like, making myself, like, seem like I'm, like, like a, a grandfather here. But, like, when I was, you know, in, in, in college or, you know, in high school, when you date, you're, you track people's dating through – Song lyrics, if they're happy song lyrics, you know, they're doing pretty well. Yeah. If they're sad song lyrics, you know, they just got, they're either got rejected or they just got broken up with. Mm -hmm. You know, like if it's if it's Crash Into Me by Dave Matthews Band, things are going well. If it's, <laughs> if it's, Grace, if it's Grace Street by Dave Matthews Band, things have gone terribly, something, something's gone wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing you hear about Sopan is as a, he's a Dave Matthews fanatic. You are. So he can relate. We could play a game, and we should plan play, play, plan a game for some point we to should. like where like every news story like he has to associate with mm. like some sort of trivia right. related to Dave Matthews. I mean, I think the pandemic made things worse for 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 single people. There was some of the most interesting data around the pandemic was yeah. people googling like um, that they were having dreams about their exes, like dreams about that your exes went up like four hundred percent or something crazy during the pandemic. Hmm. And people have been also in that BuzzFeed article. It talks about people are are basically googling. What are they googling? Like how to have a find a boyfriend or like they're, they're just like there's a lot of that single panic anxiety about like being single forever because it's a pandemic. So you're like you're not meeting as many people. You're have not you, running what, what, into. Did you notice a four hundred percent uptick in your dreams during the pandemic? I definitely had a weird like. Oh, I miss this person. I was like, no, you don't. Like, like, no, you don't. What are you talking about? But it was like, I miss the comfort that, like, we, and a little bit of like, drink a couple more of so these space, spicy yeah. mango margaritas, and you might start well, talking well, about. It. You're like, I, think I, miss this I miss. I mean, if you drink, yeah, no, no. Why we dream about past loves? Good find, New York Times piece, actually. So this is a very fun fact. Yeah. Even rats yeah. will still remember and like like basically yearn for their first love. Even rats who have like sex with a lot of different other rats will remember the first rat that they How had sex with. How do they know with. this? From the studies. I, I, How do you I study research. the rats' brain? They can, they can tell what the rats are that's thinking? All we, that's all scientists do. They just they study they, rats. Oh yeah, they study rats. So anyway, even rats are, are <laughs> because we, we remember, I mean, it's... We're crazy. Like human beings are nuts. Like we attach to Christian to says people. slutty rats never forget. Slutty rats. <laughs> I love well, young Liz, rats. Love <laughs> love and urine. Go ahead, so well Liz, you I think have out of all of us the biggest kind of social media following. Like when you are with a partner, and I don't know if you're with a partner now or not, how do you determine how outward you're gonna be about either social media PDA? Or how 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 much of your significant other is the world going to see? I don't post anything. I really, yeah. it, it takes a when long time. When do you do time. the hard launch? When do you do like the hard launch of a boyfriend? How many of the boyfriends have made your social media feed? Only, okay, one did early before when I really just moved to New York and I didn't know the repercussions of it. And um, one, my, that boyfriend is like still, because there's one Facebook post. I'm like, my boyfriend did this. And so it's still there. And that's why I've never done it again because that is from like 2012 and it's and still And you also developed quite a following for yourself. So now is it like a higher bar? Yes. And to, I don't, again, it's yeah. like, it's bringing people into your, I mean, we've seen how it's destroyed, like, you know, people, people's lives. Like, like I, I've talked about this, like Olivia Wilde removing her comments on her Instagram because she's dating Harry Styles and there's just. Taylor has a good question know, for you. Yeah. Do you scrub your Insta post breakup? I do. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. If I see that someone that I'm interested in didn't scrub their Insta from the breakup, I'm like, what are you doing? Mm. Are you still you're in or you're out? You're in or you're out. So have you done the, have you done the social? Uh, scrub or you you leave it for perpetuity. It's a museum. You can't erase a museum. You no. <laughs> getting married on Saturday. I don't. Well, I was pre before Wesley. I was never a big poster. 
So yeah. it's like it's it's not that I it's not that I actively kept them up. It's that there wasn't much to erase, if that makes sense. I really was. I I I, I didn't post much. Uh, you know, well, yeah, of any of anything, like not not even non non you know, seeing other stuff, like of, of any kind of pictures. It wasn't until I only became really active on Instagram like five or six years ago. Uh, uh, so so, and that's about when I met Wesley. So that's that that that's pretty much why that is. Um, yeah. But I feel that. But I do feel the judgment through the screen, though. <laughs> I feel. You're feeling judged. Feel the, yeah, I feel the pre-wedding judgment. Like, oh, you're and you're getting married, and you haven't scrubbed your Instagram. I, I mean, there's that. still time. There's still time. No judgment. I I, I agree with the museum you? as a journalist. And the like, museum. You, you, yeah, like I I don't know. De, de, but like kissing stuff. and stuff, like photos oh, of you I, making I, out. I didn't have photos making out. Okay, got it. Yeah, if they're like in the background of something, that I guess. That's fine. Like, yeah. I, I kind of feel, you know, I kind of feel secure enough in my relationship and ideally yeah. you know, my partner feels secure enough in my relationship that we are both aware that we've had previous, you know, people, you know, people that we've dated. Oh, really? it, yeah. it, I don't think either of us are insecure about, you know, about the relationship to feel like, oh, you need to scrub all, you know, your history yeah. from the world. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But then again, you know, I, I'm, I should probably. I might have to update my vows within a couple of days. Just I, vow, <laughs> I vow. I vow to nuke my Instagram history. Yeah, yeah just right between I gotta cherish you. You know, right, yeah. right after that one. This is a good transition to our next topic. Actually, is is Twitter or any social media mentioned in your vows right now? So. <gasps> no. No. Mm -hmm. no. Take it out. I'm a masochist, but there are limits. <laughs> <laughs> are there any Dave Matthews lyric references in your vows? No. Um. No, but I believe Wesley is walking down the aisle to a Dave Matthews band song. So oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, yeah, so I believe she's walking down the aisle to our, our actual wedding song that we're dancing to is a, is a Broadway musical called Hades Town, which is our favorite show that we've seen together. Oh. And so there's a, there's a love song from that show called All I've Ever Known. And that's so we're, so we're dancing to that. And so, um, yeah, so yeah, so there's not as much Dave Matthews. You know, it's funny, we were trying to think of different songs. And every every, every time there, there's a point where we need music for something, you know, entrance music. Uh, you know, people are flying in every time. Like, oh, what about this Dave Matthews song? And like, oh, we already did Dave Matthews. Song. And poor Wesley would be like, well, we already, we can't, we can't do that again. You know? Wow. Oh my God. Is that, is that Coco in the background? Yeah, I'm sorry. I keep alternately muting and unmuting because yeah, she is, she is, she is. Just bring her in. Bring her in. Uh, she wants to play right now. If I try to pick her up, she'll run away. She, she, oh she, God. She has one of her yeah. toys in her mouth right now. Um. Well. So I, I was going to bring up just as we talked about social media, yeah. etc. Just so we get, you know, we, we get can, back on. We, we can talk about your wedding all we day. We can talk about your wedding all day. We but, should have known. But we did want to get to because you know I think that one of the one of the stories that is literally um, probably the most viral right now. Here we go. Yeah. Taylor Lawrence, who we all know, yeah. um, has her latest sort of viral piece in the Washington Post, where she has uh, revealed the name. And some background of the woman, it turns out, who uh, runs the Libs of TikTok social media account. And what is the Libs of TikTok? Um, so they, it's, it's on multiple platforms, but basically it is a Twitter account that um, highlights um, uh, videos uh, from the left um, that I would say are catnip for the right. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of identity stuff, a lot of LGBTQ videos, yeah. uh, teachers revealing, you know, things they're going to teach students, etc. cetera. Um, and an account that a lot of LGBTQ folk feel threatens them uh, and targets them. And so anyway, this has been popping off online. So been, you saw the piece and just wondering, as someone who knows Twitter well, knows this whole world well, what, what do you make of it? Well, I was kind of surprised at the backlash to the right at Taylor Lorenz, the writer of the piece, because to me, it was a really strong piece of journalism. Um, to me, if you have an account with that many followers, and Fox is inviting you on, and, and people who are hugely influential figures in the conservative movement are, are linking to your stuff, um, amplifying it, um, you know, etc., it feels like pretty fair game to report on uh, you know, I, I just think that it, 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 I was I was just surprised to see that much backlash towards revealing the identity of the the woman behind the account. I, I just thought that 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 was very surprising to me. 
Um, I mean, it's not surprising. I shouldn't say that. It's 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 not surprising. You know, anytime you know, anytime something like you know something like this happens, it's called doxing or whatever. But I, this is not, I, I the the arguments didn't really hold water with me as I read the piece. I thought it was a really strong piece of journalism, and you know, um, Taylor's done a lot of great work at Washington Post. So I, I know that you know she was with us for a while, and um, you know. I I, I, I I was I thought it was a really strong piece of writing and and and, and reporting and very diligent and, and what was particularly interesting about it is that in the first I think 500 or so words of the piece it really lays out in great detail why this matters right yeah. who are the people that are spreading this message who are the people that you know have had the creator on the show et cetera et cetera so I thought. Um, yeah, I thought it was a really interesting piece of journalism, and um, and and that, that was pretty much my reaction to it. it. You know, it's it's interesting. Steve Morris brings up that uh, Taylor openly said uh, she thought the account was a bad account, and mm-hmm. so you know people are like, well, the, she has an agenda here, and she's also complained about her herself being doxxed. You know, so as somebody who lives in this world, can you distinguish for us kind of your feeling about like, uh, or if there's some similarities between like. The, the way that Taylor's been targeted, because people are basically, I think we had the New York Post headline, Taylor's a hypocrite for um, her coverage here, given what she has said about being doxxed, et cetera. Um, the, the nuance here between reporting on this woman who lives in TikTok versus what the type of backlash Taylor has faced and complained about. Well, let's, I think we should define what doxing is to begin with, right? Yeah. Doxing, at least to, to the extent that I understand it, is when you reveal someone's uh, you know, home number. Mm-hmm home address right and you give out personal identification that allows people to you know target you at home that's not what taylor did taylor reported on publicly available information at least from from my understanding so so this isn't doxing at least from what i can tell so um you know unless i'm unless there's a fact that i'm missing here from from what i can tell there 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 wasn't a doxing done here so um uh so i understand that's what taylor's being accused of but that doesn't appear to me to be what happened here. Yeah. yeah. And Steve Morris asks, you know, that the fact that she called it a bad account, does that undermine the legitimacy of the reporting? What are your what are your thoughts? I, I don't see why. I mean, if there's a fact in a piece that people can test, if if you get stuff wrong in a piece or stuff is framed unfairly, mm-hmm. or or that undermines reporting. Mm-hmm. Right? Like that undermines the legitimacy of reporting. If something is wrong with your reporting. You know, but this notion that um, um, this notion that um, uh, uh, having private opinions, every single human in the world, including reporters, have pro- have, have have personal opinions. Yeah. And yeah. so to me, I, I don't think it I don't I don't think it undermines the reporting. And if there is something that undermines the reporting, say what it is. What is yeah. the what is the stuff? What is the content of the reporting that you uh, uh, oppose. And if there's something, and you can't think of that, and it's, oh, she has, she said this thing in a, in a tweet that has mm-hmm. nothing to do with the story itself. Well, then I, I, I find that hard to believe that, that that would be considered um, undermining to the reporting. Well, you know, one thing I find interesting here is like right, right to privacy in 2022 mm. when you uh, run a major account. Cause like it, you know, the woman uh, until her name was revealed, um, was like going anonymously like on uh, Hannity mm-hmm. and like doing a phoner and like running this account at 700,000 highly influential account where, you know, she curates these videos and then, you know, the, the media then uses that as a, as a resource. Um, what is the expectation or like, how do you actually, this is a better question since you're a reporter so Ben, like, you know, clearly this woman did not want her identity revealed. What is the standard by which you as a reporter determine, you know what, even though you yourself don't want to be revealed, I think is in the public interest to know your name. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it in the public interest? I mean, that's the question. That's that that's that's the beginning end of the question. I think you know. Um, yeah, I, I don't think those are. Listen, I've never been in that position as a reporter. You know, almost all the reporting I have done has been uh, has been on figures that are already public. You know, but I think you know we take those we take those considerations, and we I and mean, we're not a monolith, so everyone has different bars for this. My bar is pretty high, I would like to think. Um, so I I I think you know does it serve the public interest? You know, is there a reason? What's the compel? There needs to be a compelling reason to do so, and mm-hmm. so that that's the bar for me. You know, is it in the public interest? And every case is different. Every instance is different. You know, but I, I, I just don't know that, uh, you know, an account that has 
you know, I think what, 700,000 followers just on Twitter alone or, or TikTok alone, excuse me. I, I, just, I just don't know that, that there is a compelling reason to um, grant anonymity in that case. I, I just don't know that that's, that's the case. Right. And, and Mega Bucks 11 ask, um, cause we kind of went right into it. Um, yeah. can we talk more about what the actual reporting, uh, is in the piece and what was the reaction and fallout? So right now we're seeing Donald Trump Jr. has gotten involved. So yeah, just to, to, to recap, cause we started talking about it. So Pam, right. what is the reporting exactly? And, and, and then what happened? Well, I don't want to say, you know, because I don't want to uh, get, you know, I don't, I don't want to screw screw it up. But, you know, from Taylor's reporting, it basically is there's a woman that, uh, you know, I'm forgetting her name because I don't have the name right. in front of me. Uh, does, does someone else have that? Um, yeah. uh, I don't have the I don't have the piece up in front of me. Kaya Rachik. Right. And so I believe, you know, she was I think she was. Uh, live, she was live blogging. Um, she's had a couple different accounts. I think she was live blogging January 6th. I think she was on the ground at that point. Uh, I think she's tried to start a couple different accounts, um, but only lives of TikTok. Now the actual account of the, of the um, lives of TikTok shares, I think, you know, a lot of videos that imply or suggest that, you know, really pushing the groomers narrative, of um, mm -hmm. people who identify as LGBTQ. Um, anyway, so I, I don't want to go too far because you know it's not my reporting, but I yeah. think though that's the crux of uh, yeah. crux of the piece. Yeah, it's it's a like it's basically it breaks down um, what the account is, um, you know, uh, in kind of like the evolution of mm -hmm. her uh, what what she's been po posting, what she's been doing, mm -hmm. and, and how mm -hmm. she got to where she is, and then if I. Um, I'm trying to pull up because uh, they're basically engaged in a war today on the Twitter account. But if you go deeper in the Twitter account, you'll see if you pull up my screen here, like it's a lot of these, um, you know, stories specifically uh, often related to um, LGBTQ teachers, um, oftentimes posting on social media, uh, their opinions, things they're going to do in class, yeah. et cetera. And from Taylor's reporting, some of the teachers that uh, uh, the account has, uh, spotlighted have received harassment as a result of or the postings, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. you know so so you know and they're, they're huge it's, it's a it's a it's obviously gotten a lot of attention among you know yeah. uh, particularly on the right I think, as we mentioned before you know tucker carlson had the person on the show uh i think anonymously i think everywhere she's been everywhere she's been interviewed before uh this washington post piece uh, had she had been granted anonymity, I think uh, uh, in New York Post, Fox, uh, I want to say a podcast interview, et cetera. Um, so that's also a big part of the piece as well. Mm. Oh, Jeremy, yeah. so the commenters right, Jeremy. So I think uh, the first kind of big push for followers for her was when Joe Rogan talked right. about the account. And Joe oh, Rogan so, yeah. you know, really yeah. praised the account, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how, that is how the account got first kind of got a big push do we do it if you abby if you have the video of joe yeah, rogan we can play it we can play that because um, yeah more is asking how dangerous is it that carlson and graham rogan <laughs> well I mean, the thing is like so it. this account has been highlighting teachers who've then you know gotten threats and then now this oh here here's the rogan clip if we have audio okay um where he basically says it's the well i'll let him say it. Yeah. I mean, you can see it. <laughs> you can see the quote there. But yeah, and, um, and a lot of... Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, someone is asking it's, why... Yeah. Oh, oh, here we go. Let's go. We'll ask after. Ever gone on libs of TikTok? Yeah, right. That's libs, right. Yes. Libs of TikTok on Twitter is one of the greatest fucking accounts of all time. It's yeah. every yeah, day. Right. You're, they, they scour all these really super crazy liberal TikTok pages. Ever gone on libs of TikTok? Yeah. So, I mean, it's an effective page and they do a good job of curating and that's why it's developed the following that it's got. Yeah. And are people, someone in the chat was asking, you know, why is in Wa the Washington Post coming in, in bigger defense of Taylor um, at this what, point? Do we know why what Why isn't think? it? Yeah. Oh, is that the sense you've gotten, Soap? Do you feel like the Washington Post is not effectively defending her or are they standing by her? I mean, I, 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 mean, I, I this is a complicated question because, yeah. you know, this is something Taylor has talked about quite a bit about whether you know, newsrooms adequately stand up for reporters getting um, critic, uh, criticism. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when and when the line is crossed from criticism into harassment, 
Um, I, you know, I, that, I can't speak to that. I, I don't know what right. the conversation yeah. is between Taylor and the Washington Post. Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes uh, newsrooms don't release statements because they don't want to draw more attention and invite more harassment. I think the, I think those are complicated questions. And by the way, one that I'm not qualified to answer because I don't deal with that kind of harassment. Mm. Yeah. Donald, Donald Trump Jr. is not retweeting yeah. my basketball takes. Okay? He's, <laughs> not yeah. he's, yeah. not so nah, he's not so offended by my, my Knicks takes or, or my novel and saying, get this psycho out of here. You know, that's not happening yeah. to me. Right. You know, for, for women, for, you know, uh, reporters of color who cover, the, you know, cover the right, cover politics, mm-hmm. cover tech disinformation, et cetera, they deal with that way more in space. So I, I'm, not in, I'm not qualified to say, here's what newsrooms should and shouldn't be doing, because frankly, the last time I really dealt with that kind of stuff was in 2016 when I covered Trump. And even then, you know, I don't think Twitter, Twitter was as... Mm-hmm. Easy to easy to weaponize as yeah. it is now. I, yeah. I just don't think so. I, I don't. It's, I think, it's really I think remarkable the how the platforms yeah. have evolved so quickly yeah. in that way. Yeah. They, like mm-hmm. 2016 Twitter was a different Twitter. It was. Um, 100%. Steve Morris says, "Isn't it indisputable that some of these people are super cringy?" I mean, I will say mm-hmm. that like some of these videos were a little creepy of some of these teachers. Um, not that's not to say that they, you know. But and also they're posting it on their TikToks and their Instagrams. That's like, what I think if too. If you're putting it out there, like libs of TikTok may pick it yeah. up, folks. It might show up on Fox mm-hmm. News. Like you got to be prepared that like anything right. you put out, we know this. Right. Can anything you, you put out there, I, I think one of the pieces of value, and and this is you know I'm going to admit, admit my ignorance here. One of the pieces of value to the this reporting is that it reminded me I'm in a bubble a little bit because I mm-hmm. had never seen this account. Me too. I'd yeah. never. I'd never. I'm not on TikTok, so I've never not seen these TikToks. I, you know, so for me, it was a world, it opened a door to me that previously I did not know existed. And oh. I think that's a, I think it's valuable in that respect too, of here's this huge following, this huge cultural influence that's happening, and you don't even realize it because you're in Occupy X, Y, and Z worlds. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ali says that the TikTok algorithm is so good, it has you thinking, oh, I can say whatever I want. It only goes out to people who are like me. I yeah. totally, yeah, um, feel that way when I put out. It's so funny. I'm the opposite. Stuff. I'm always, oh, really? as a journalist, yes. I'm always know that like someone who hates my guts is going to see. Like, yeah. like if my worst enemy saw yeah. this tweet or saw this mm. post or saw whatever, what would they do with it? But I mean, it's wow. a very dark way to. Well, that's look a dark way to see the. That's why you probably don't have to TikTok account, and you're way smarter. And then, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. so funny. What most just said is that should probably be. Yeah. You know, we have these complicated newsroom policies about what you yeah. can and can't say on social media. Mm-hmm. It should really just be one mm-hmm. line. What will yeah. your worst enemies use this tweet yeah. for? Okay, yeah. and like, yeah. and that will that will. You'll never have a bad yeah. tweet ever again with if mm-hmm. you operate with every tweet knowing knowing going with that mentality. Yeah, no, well, that's absolutely true. I, I, you know, listen. I think that like this goes back to being in multiple newsrooms mm-hmm. and like when the first hack started happening. Like, is this an email that like if somebody right. got a hold of or yes. got leaked? Yeah. And this really came out of 2016. Yeah. Like, if my newsroom email got leaked, w- yeah. would it get me fired? Yeah. Would it get me whatever? Yeah. And then you even saw that with lawsuits that happened to newsrooms where like. I think what was the major lawsuit ABC had to pay out because it showed that the producers were opining in their emails. By the way, keep note here, folks, everyone here who works at Recount, that like Disney had to pay out a huge sum to a company because mm. it was clear that the producers, Pink Slime, that was the lawsuit Abby just mentioned in my ear. And so they had to pay hundreds of millions of dollars because it. the judge was like, well, based on the internal emails, it appears that you did have an agenda to like push a certain narrative wow. in the story. Yikes. So, you know, the, I, I try to keep that in mind in every email and mm. the internal email and then external social media. Posts, yeah, right? yeah. That's why you, you always send audio, uh, like audio notes. That's what I do now. Like, audio it, notes? Because I think about that for text because yeah. I had a thing happen where someone published the, the t- and I was like, now it's like, yeah, the screenshot of this text could appear in my worst enemy story. Don't do it. Worst enemy. Who's your worst enemy? Yeah, Kedro just asked, who's yeah. my worst enemy? Right? Worst I don't think I have worst. I, I use that as a, as a just kind of a uh, idea. idea. Your nemesis. You don't like, have a nemesis. I don't you have it. So Ben, do you have a nemesis? Um, I have a nemesis. I do. I have uh, several. They don't know that they're my nemesis. They're <laughs> Are, nemesis. Do you think that your, nem- your, your nemesis is nemesis? Like, do you think that you're oh. their nemesis? Or do you think, or are they just your nemesis? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, no, I don't. 
I don't, and I think that probably doesn't speak well of me. Uh, but I also probably am, am someone's nemesis, and I don't know that. For that sure. Person. And that should yeah. you know? put you forward and on, on, on a hard day. Remember that's, that you're- That's yeah. so pandemic. There's yeah. somebody who has a dartboard with so yes. Penn's face like, on it. He always get. he's so great. And he, you know, so that should, should give you a little push on those hard days. <laughs> you're right. Um, yeah, definitely. Speaking of newsrooms, yeah. speaking of nemesis, yeah. nemesis, nemesis, yeah. uh, we really want to talk to you about workplaces. Oh, good transition. Uh, because we are going back into the workplace. We're here in the workplace. And there's a lot of stories about, about this. And I, I, I gotta say, I feel like there's always a different angle. Like at one point it was, oh, you know, men are going back to the workplace, women are going back in the workplace, what's gonna happen? Mm -hmm. Then it was like, you know, people of color are happy not to go in the workplace because there's so many microaggressions and they're like, I don't wanna be back there with you guys. And then um, now, and then there was a whole extrovert which is versus introverts. And now it looks like it, there's also- This is the forum space today that got us talking on it, um, workers facing inflexible office oh, returns. Stressed out. Yeah. We're stressed out. But our bosses, not so much. What's going on there, Sohan? Well, I mean, it's, it's exactly what the headline, headline is, right? Like, look, who does it benefit mm. to be back in the office, right? It benefits bosses, right? They can have the people nearby, you know, you, you could have, um, you know, it, it, it's about a power dynamic. Now, to me, I have never been more productive as a worker than I have been in the last two years. Mm. Really? I mean, I don't, yeah, 100%. I, I never want to be in an office again. Now, I say that, you know, I, I say that, but I really also realize that that doesn't work for everybody. Yeah. Right? There, you know, I have friends, particularly ones with kids, you know, um, et cetera, that they need, you know, they want to be in an office. I, I, <laughs> I, really, I really am very surprised when I see particularly in newsrooms mandate, you know, back to office. Because we know that we know that working from home is cheaper. If it works better for you, it saves you money. You are more, you know, in my case, I'm definitely more productive. You get to spend more time with family, friends, etc. You get you get save time on transportation, right? So that hour that I'm not on a train or walking somewhere, I'm spending that time working. Um, I just I just think I've mentally, in some ways, now I realize that the pandemic has been damaging in other ways, but in terms of just kind of my mental headspace when it comes to work, I, I'm in a better place because I'm working from home. Uh -huh. um, but that doesn't work for everybody, you know? But I do think that the mandating being from home is is a little, um, I just think it's short-sighted. Like, have we learned nothing from the pandemic? Um, at least, at least, at least, you know, a bunch of people like the Times does a flexible option, which I think is great. I think uh -huh. that, that, that that's fine. Um, the Wall Street Journal uh, has is is being flexible. Uh, the Washington Post is doing the opposite, which is you know they're they're mandating and they've lost people good talent over that. Mm. And I'm, I'm just surprised to see that. And 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 someone you know the comment just mentioned so many can't work from home. That's true. This 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 decision this this, this is a white collar problem. Yeah, this is if you can work from home. Yeah, that, you that's who this is. If you can work from home, right. now, that's who this refers to. Yeah. Um, so you're talking about a certain a, a segment of the economy that yeah. has the ability to work from yeah. home and then therein like is the debate. And it's so interesting because I've seen all these numbers where like the, you know, uh, the Gen Zers and boomers like want to be back in the office and the younger folks don't want. And then I see like millennials want to be back in the office uh -huh. and the Gen Zers don't want. But then I see like Gen Zers. So it's so interesting to me yeah. because like. I don't know, as an elder millennial, geriatric millennial, geriatric millennial, who was, you know, brought up in the system by the boomers and the mm -hmm. Gen Zers, I do my best, you know, it's so interesting, so hearing you say that, because, like, I think I do my best work in the office, mm. and not wow. in the office. Wow. Um, but I was always somebody who, like, even going back to, like, you know, uh, high school or whatever, I need to go to the library to do my work. Like, Me doing too. my Like, I, I like concentration-wise, yeah. I could not do my work at yeah. home. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if that... Think. Is yeah. kind of ingrained but, yeah, in but I also like, applaud that, right? If you know what I, I think what we need to move toward is executives recognizing what works best for the workers. So if that works best for you, yeah. you should be able to engage that side of yourself. Yeah. Um for me, that that's that that isn't as effective for me. And I've yeah. I've learned that over the I learned that about myself over the last two years. No, I mean I mean I haven't been going into an office full time for Long, even you know, really most of my time at the times because the stuff that I've covered, culture, sports, etc., that stuff happening at night away from the office, etc. Um, but but I, I just think that companies need to, you know, or companies have a moral obligation, you know, 
if productivity is going to be unaffected and or increased in some case to allow flexibility from the workplace. Yeah. I basically just want what I can't have. Um, so when I'm in the office, I'm like, man, I wish I was at home. And when I'm at home, I'm like, man, I wish I was in the office. So I'm just perpetually unsatisfied. Um, that's my status quo. But I, uh, but I think I like both. I think that's what's actually we, happening. We've got this sort of a hybrid here. Like, we do. You know, we do. We're kind of like doing hybrid. the mornings yes. from home. Yes. We come in in the afternoon. Yes. So, um, hybrids, hybrids for the win. So if it's a big weekend for you, is the wedding Saturday night? Yeah, Saturday night. Ooh. So how are you going to do if uh, game three Saturday night? How are you going to manage that against the Nets? Uh, I will not be. <laughs> I will. I, I will not be. I. I listen, I'm. I'm. I. I am very willing to unplug. You know, from work, uh, at least um, from watching basketball when I am not. Um, <laughs> when I am not. Grace, Actually, Grace I'll text you updates, so Ben. But you should. Is I had someone take my phone. And just like take pictures. Oh, gosh. And like, I didn't check my phone all day. Uh, so Wesley's cool. already barred me from having my phone that day. Yeah. Once we're inside the, once we're inside the, and my response was, well, how am I going to watch the games then? She said, ah, and then, and that was the end of that discussion. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, um, <laughs> that's what we do. That's why we marry you. So, so Penn, you enjoy your weekend yeah. in Charleston, uh, my Thank friend. You. Uh, remember it. Uh, it's special. And uh, people earlier in the chat were bringing up mortgage, the show Mortgage or Marriage, where you get promised 30 grand towards a wedding or 30 grand towards a house. Okay. And like, it's a guy, no, it's a probably show on Netflix. And you watch the couple oh, debate. Wow. I, I'm not, but I have so many thoughts on this and I wish we had more time and we could have, uh, mm. I would have, next yeah. week, you know, next week, let's say for next week because I, I, I have thoughts on this. Well, you'll have the marriage in under your form, belt and you will then determine, yes. you're like, yeah, all right. Is it worth it? As long as Wesley's not watching, let me tell you how I really feel about the discussion of more marriage or mortgage. <laughs> so enjoy it, man. Yes. Right, the honey was not immediately. No, uh, we're gonna do a little mini moon in um, Hilton Head, and then we're gonna go um, do something longer in September because um, you know a little little. Um, a little easier for us to get away, yeah. and and so take, that's, take that's your time. Fun. Take your time. You want to decompress after the, uh, next week too, but except sure. except for the hour you'll spend with us next week talking yes, about mortgage or marriage. Yes. All right. Thank take you, care, guys. And Talk to you. Bye. Thanks, Alpha. So oh, that's so nice. Very nice. I'm excited. Um, I can't wait to see all his uh, grams about it. So yeah. um, we were talking about tipping. There's no real well, I, transition well, here. Well, I feel like getting married to tipping, but um, you know, listen. Sometimes there's no sometimes transition. there's no transition because, <laughs> like in in traditional shows, you would have a commercial break you after would. the guests. You would. We, but if you're a sponsor, say you're. Faux pas. You could be. And you're looking for. We, a, could be, we could be seeing your ad right now. This is your free ad. The next one is paid. And <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about this? I, the special mango <clears throat> margarita is not bad. It's good. It's, and it's, it's not even. Uh, I sure. hadn't even put it in the fridge. I'm yeah. sorry. It's not cold. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we were typing video. So yeah. I, you know, if, if you're like anybody else right now, um, you go to a place and you have probably tipped for something you've never tipped before. Yes. If you see an iPad. If you see an iPad and they flip it around on you. Tip. Yeah. You're there's that to, there's that yeah. moment and they're staring at you. Yeah. And you're like They know and they're they know exactly. I picked no yeah, tip, yeah, yeah. right? They yeah, know yeah, it. Yeah. And yeah. they haven't made my drink yet. No. You don't know how it's gonna be, how it's gonna go. Let's let's listen to the TikTok. Yes. Let's see how the TikTok tells us. I'm sorry to say this, but tipping culture has gotten out of control. And I just want to preface this by saying that I always tip. I always tip 20% like standards. I went to this like local, like little it's like a burger and fry place, kind of like the local version of McDonald's. So like chicken tenders and fries, right? I get up to the pay window and she's like, how much do you want to tip? And I'm just like, what? And she's like, yeah, did you want to leave a tip? And she's like pointing to them. And I was like, oh no, not today. And then I just felt really uncomfortable, but like, homegirl, what am I going to tip you for? I'm in the fucking drive-thru. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry yeah. to say mm -hmm. I, she captured it perfectly. Yeah. Also yeah. on 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 the mark Home 47. Girl, yeah. What am I gonna tip you yeah. for? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the mark 47 tips, the waffle fries look delicious. And I have to agree. They I did. was distracted and I had to watch it a second time. So <laughs> Actually, like, are those waffle fries that? tip worthy? Mm. I mean, were they good enough where you're like on the mark 47? Are they worth a tip? I totally oh employees, yeah. And and employees um OP 
see and up. I'm just uh, going with open up on that. Open up, I, yeah. I, I, every time up. I'm like, what? Open uh, up. Oh, open up. Open up. Um, says that employees should be paid by their employers. They shouldn't depend on strangers to make up the difference. I totally agree. Um, at my first waitress job, um, yeah. I was paid four dollars an hour. Uh, I was paid two eighty an hour. Two eighty. Yeah, pancake house. Oh my god! And did they steal your tips from you? Well, you did. sometimes had to pool it. Okay. They just like at the end of the night, they're just because like, you had to give some to the bus boys. Okay, mine did. Was and some to different. the dishwash. Well, yeah. yeah, you have to. Yeah, tip you have to. Yeah, tip them all out. Yeah. Um, but anyway. It, you should not, no one should be paid $2.80 an hour. What sort of restaurant, what, what restaurant were you? Vardini, uh, it's a dive bar and the old. I, I you were a dive bar waitress. I was, uh, bartender, bartender, bartender and waitress, yeah. And it was tough. Uh, no, this place, they stole from us. Like we all realized, they would make us uh, come to work and then they would be like, wait until there's people. And then you'd wait for three hours sometimes. Yeah. And then they'd be like, no, it's not busy enough, go home. You wouldn't get paid. It was crazy. Wow. I, it was bad. Vardini. So, Vard de nuit, Vard de nuit, and Vard it means theft in the night, which is hilarious. Um, that, that's what Wait, is it still, still open? Yeah. Is it still open? Really? Are you watching Vard de nuit management? Vard de nuit is on Liz, Twitch. You owe me a lot of money. At least fifteen hundred Canadian dollars. Yes, at least. At least. Yeah. Anyway, you know, it's just because when things are like that, where where you're depending on the kindness of strangers, and like it, it just means that you're so much less protected as an employee, and it yeah. opens up to harassment because you have to put up with people who are like, you know, for women especially, or people of color, or marginalized people, you have to kind of put up with people being not very nice or being flirty with you when you don't want to be flirty. It's really, Here, it opens up just a lot of- Here's, here's the stat they dug up today. That Square released a stat. Square is often the payment system you use on those iPads that you get it. That tipping went up at the beginning of the pandemic, 23.5% in quick service restaurants two years ago. It's now down to 19.8%. So it's down. Tipping is down. So people are kind of feeling the same way we do, which is like... Do but have to but for that? how are they putting that data together? Because as we explained at the beginning, there's yeah. iPads in places where there shouldn't be iPads. Like I was, I, I was buying groceries at one point in this like little market in LA. Not yeah. little market. This like no, actually, it was like kind of like a hipster, you know, cash grab. Like it yeah. was just like eight dollar, you know, kombucha and stuff like that. Mm. And then there was a tip option, and I was like, I, I don't understand. Like, am I? And then yeah, you start questioning yourself. Did I? Wait, we have tipping person? on Twitch, don't we? Like you can tip if you want. Oh, uh, I didn't even like know that. Like before we hey, crap we get all the over. Tips? I don't think we get the tips. I think it goes to the set. It goes to the set. We can it goes upgrade to Griffin. the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Griffin should Griffin definitely should get a tip get today. Tips. Cassie yeah. heated up the food, so Cassie, Cassie gets a tip. Cassie and Griffin should get Griffin all the should tips get a tip. Today. Um, yes. And and then we can kind of like distribute in the control yes. room yes. beyond that. But I will say that I've been tipping everybody yeah. every time because. It, it, it's horrible. Like working with a mask. I mean, now that maybe masks are. Yeah, I mean, Grace off, but been, like, people, and Markham and company are like, noting that if you make a minimum wage, you, yeah. you tip those. Oh my people. God. Tip, I, I've just been like, you're working in a pandemic and people are awful to you and people are probably yeah. you're probably not you're getting paid. Like, here, take, you know. So I've been tipping more. So I'm surprised by that statistic. Well, I mean, you, you literally let a, a woman go around the grocery store okay. with a credit card well, recently. Okay. She who asked for claimed access to be to homeless. Credit card. So, <laughs> and I stopped her at 50. So let me say this face right here, you see this person walk into your coffee shop. Rest. She's going to tip you. She's the hell on. Look, no, no. Look over at camera three. Look over at camera three. There we go. There. That's your tipper, everybody. 25%, maybe 30%. You know what? Be like, you know what's normal now is 50% tip. Um, I have seen some people who, uh, uh, they always post on Instagram, tip the check. Where like whatever the bill was, they tip that amount. What do you which is, mean? What do you mean? Like they think it's a very nice thing to like surprise the waiter if they can like if the bill comes to forty seven dollars to also then tip them forty seven dollars to give them the full amount to then double up your amount or whatever if you can okay. afford that. Like it's a nice thing sure. to do for to make someone's day. Of course, yeah. it sure does. Tip the check make your day. Say. Yeah, sure Not does. Magic. Yeah. Well, anyway. So, I, well, how does this end? I, how does the I, tipping thing end? I feel like. How is this gonna? What's the full story of the tipping, guys? The full story is redistribute the wealth. All right, just like let's come on, because you're sounding very like no, Karl Marx right now. It's making us fight again. And it's like yeah. we're fighting like this. We gotta fight like this. We gotta fight like this, and we're doing this. Okay. Does that make sense? Does that, or is it I buy drink too many margaritas? That's, You've had a, by the way, as a former bartender, how do you feel about spicy mango margarita? What would you mix it with? Or since it already comes with alcohol, you don't mix this I with think anything. I would have shaken it. 
It would taste really good. Shaking it. Yeah, with some ice. Like it would it'd be mm. good, I think, shaken, but um, maybe not. What was the most annoying? Like I feel like every time I've ever ordered a mojito, that was like the most annoying it drink is. for bartenders it is. with the, mu- the muddling of the mint. It is. But I worked in a dive bar. We did not have. Oh, you're thinking there's no mojitos drink. here. There's no mint. Um, yeah. it, and if there is, don't don't eat it. Don't put it. I mean, honestly, I will say this as a. Um, don't if there's fruit garnishes, yeah. take yeah. them out ask for none of them because they're we're touching so many things and then we're touching the I was fruit. thinking about that. Don't. Then I was watching during COVID the bartender is also using gloves. They had latex gloves oh, on. Oh, that's a new thing. But case. then they're touching everything with the latex gloves so you're kind of like what's the point also, of latex the gloves? Also the latex gloves coming back full circle is in the drink with the latex is lowering the testosterone of men because it, there's plastic and it gets into the food. We and refer you to yesterday's show with Tucker Carlson yes. where he's doing the tanning of the And I he the Testicle tanning. Yes. Testicle tanning. Yes. Um, speaking of other right things now. that have become unaffordable, thank you, Grace, for that transition. <laughs> <laughs> is testicle, how much is testicle tanning? I don't, we didn't even look it up. Do you want to Google that while I, I, while, while I get I'll us into this out. next story? Yesterday we talked about Tucker Carlson's, um, yes, his show with the tanning of them. The show's going to look into that for us. So American renters and wannabe home buyers both have incredibly bleak outlook. Um, so basically there's two surveys that have been released by the Fed. This shows you, um, how people feel about buying a home. Sorry. I'm like trying to see the graphic here. Renters likelihood of owning a home. So these are new numbers out showing that, um, people as they see the prices, inflation, et cetera, are, uh, more and more pessimistic about mm-hmm. ever owning a home, mm-hmm. particularly those who make less than 60 grand a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, those folks are also dealing with, we're talking to Grace Weinstein, who's free to pop in here, um, yes. about rent and rent prices that have just skyrocketed. They're bad. They're and bad. And so this survey shows in a negative way, the lack of affordability of home buying, but also in a, I guess a positive way, as the housing market has been on fire the past mm-hmm. couple of years, that maybe there'll be some calm to the market as mortgage prices go up. There's Grace joining us from the um, the arcade upstairs. Woohoo! Our arcade, the Recount Arcade. Um, the Recount Arcade. Are we in a housing bubble? Can anybody answer that question? I don't know what that means because I was like seven minutes old in the 2008 housing crisis. Uh, are we headed for that? Much? It's so. In talking to folks, in talking to experts on this, it's very different from 08. So 08, in the lead up to 08, it became very easy to buy a home, even if you didn't have the money for it. And so there were a bunch of subprime mortgages. They were giving anyone and everyone a mortgage. And then basically there was this financial product called subprime mortgages. Banks were buying up these mortgages. And then when people couldn't eventually afford that, it collapsed, you know, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, et cetera. We have now kind of refined the financial system. Those banks aren't taking that type of risk anymore. But in terms of a bubble, we have seen prices skyrocket like we saw in the lead up to 08. So the good news is... We won't see a crash like we saw in 08. The bad news is we're living in a bubble. And the bubble implies that the bubble will burst at some point. Mm -hmm. It does not appear that the bubble will burst like it did in 08, 09, but that we might just take the air out of it slowly. Mm-hmm. Um, but with inflation, Grace, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, people are skeptical, like that the house that what cost 200 grand that now costs 400 grand, will it ever go back to 200 grand? Probably not. Oh like, my God. will it go back to 350 or will it just stop increasing for a couple of years? How do we get bailed out? Like the banks got bailed out. I feel like that, the people, yeah. How you got some checks. You got some out? checks in the recent years. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Well, that was for, for, uh, uh, one, uh, one time. college grads, um, who are, trying to work in media in the big city uh we're not super enough to cover no. things like rent yeah. um which people on tiktok are now posting you know people my age uh that their rents are going up by 500 yeah. to a thousand dollars a month which obviously is going to force them out of their living situations which I know you know you're trying yeah. to hustle at your job you're trying to hustle in your lives and you have to you know uproot your 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 home to try to find a place that you can afford to live Mm -hmm. um and it's so tough i mean one of the issues you face here also that like banks were buying up homes so now like banks on opportunity you know as covid was going crazy to just buy up all Mm. these homes so now like major companies you know like own tens of thousands of homes Mm, and then they're selling them 
you know? There was a story, I believe, and I don't know if Slade Somer, editor-in-chief, is here, but he had mentioned it to me, and I thought this was fascinating, yeah. um, that the hedge funds and companies like that are now buying up houses and then putting them on Airbnb because millennials more and more don't want to buy a home. They want the flexibility to, you know, traverse the universe and live wherever they want without, you know, being tied down. So well, those houses are still being bought up, but then they're being translated into this like modern economy of Airbnb nomadic lifestyles, which is fascinating to think about as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I haven't seen it in, in my feed. I saw someone today was like going nomad and like, I was like, wait, what? What, what are you doing, Julian? Like, what's going on? I, I, I have a friend, uh, Mike, who's gone nomad for two years. Oh. Um, and like, he's, you know, and he's one who could actually afford rent, but he's just decided like, what, what's the point of, of burning through that money if you can for like sure. live nomadic? But like, I don't know, like, I, I just, I need a place to call my home. Mm. Like, and by the way, speaking of nomad, did you see... Grace, the um, in Elon Musk's interview with TED conference last week in Vancouver, among the headlines that came out, yes. we were all focused on Twitter headlines. I know. He claims he doesn't own a home and he couch surfs, and he's worth two hundred and twenty billion dollars. I feel like that's a stretch. I'm like, can I what? just like wrap this around really quick? Like, <laughs> and he has you're not like you're not an unhoused person. Yeah, you are exactly. the richest man in the world. You are not couch surfing. Yeah. You can be put up in the nicest home or nicest yeah. hotel anywhere yeah. in the yeah. world whenever you feel like it. Exactly. And you don't you have children? He's a dad. What are you he doing? Six children, seven maybe. Yeah. I'm so I'm so over it. Here, we here. don't let's Here's... not bring him into anything we don't have to. Here's your headline. <laughs> Okay, oh. yeah. No, USA Today wants me to try two months free. Oh, we're good. I'd like to help them. You know, they bought up so many papers, <laughs> Gannett. Like, I feel bad. I went to, um, like, outside Cleveland, Ohio, um, and Worcester, Ohio recently. Mm -hmm. And, like, if you looked at what the daily paper looks like in Worcester, Ohio, it just made me so sad. They have oh, two goodness. reporters, and it's just AP copy. And, like, I want to help. But then the papers are owned by hedge funds in Gannett, and, like, they're not. That money's not. Mm. This is a big, big like thing like for me for i love time. local newspapers um yeah. do you have a favorite local newspaper that you subscribe to or try to help out so i i grew up uh outside chicago mm -hmm. reading the chicago tribune great newspaper mm -hmm. that once had like foreign correspondents around the mm -hmm. world like was an incredible newspaper the chicago tribune and so i will still subscribe to them even though they're That's not owned right. by alden global capital the hedge fund that's sad. You yeah. know what? That's what you want. What about you, Grace? What's your favorite local newspaper? I'm a big um, Houston Chronicle and Texas okay. Tribune. Nice. And I also love the, um, and if my mother is still listening, maybe she could pop in the chat with the one I'm thinking of. Because earlier today I got um, Minnesota and Milwaukee confused as basketball teams. And there's a local newspaper in one of those two places that I subscribe to that I love. The Journal Sentinel or the Star Tribune? Yes, yes. The Journal, Journal Sentinel. Sentinel. I almost did an internship with the Journal Sentinel in the DC uh, when I was in college. Ooh. And I ended up doing an ABC News internship with Sam Donaldson and Cookie Roberts instead. I want all these photos. I want this little scrapbook. Like, little like, Mosh. Like Mosh. On, in Seventeen Magazine. There was a photo of, of, of me with, uh, and we were, at that point, there was a, a, a young a young anchor who was trying to make it named George Stephanopoulos, who had just come from the Clinton administration. Canadian. And Sam Donaldson would just yell in the hall oh, being like yeah. who is this democrat trying to be a journalist like we cannot let him do this interview anyway oh that was my internship drama. experience instead of working for the milwaukee journal Sentinel, which they do great work they do good polling mm. um i like the um uh the bees used to be good for a while the sacramento and modesto bees yeah there used to be some great local papers. This could be a fun segment for us. Like once a week, yeah. we bring on a local news reporter. I would love that. And say what they're talking about. I think that's I, fantastic. I really idea. like that because, by the way, like I remember, you always see these sad tweets from like a local reporter in like Wyoming who's like, "I'm still making fourteen thousand dollars a year," and like, I, you know, like I'm trying to report on my community, but like I can't afford to eat. I'm eating pet food. No. You know, terrible. Well, it's we'll talk about that for next week. We will. I love that idea. Thank you so much, Grace. Yeah, speaking, thanks for the news likes it. Uh, speaking of investigative yeah. reporting, yeah. Um, we're ending the show talking about a really important investigation from BuzzFeed News reporter David Mack, yeah. who poured over years of White House Easter egg roll photos. Whoa, we're, ju we're jumping to this, We huh? are. You not got the text. I didn't um, get the text. <laughs> and in order to figure out yeah. how many bunny costumes um, our tax dollars have paid paid for so, I am so this is one of the reasons 
I love BuzzFeed. I do. It's like, who else decided, like, we're going to do a photo investigation of Easter bunny costumes at Easter egg roll. Wait, is somebody, I should probably pull up this story so I can scroll through this or whoever in the control room is scrolling through it. So effectively what we find out is, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Yeah, okay, come on. There we go, okay. Bunny costume shot. one, costume two. There is Lady Bunny, and mm-hmm. then there's like serious freaked out geek, bunny. Geek bunny. Yeah. Uh, geek bunny with the glasses. Yeah. And geek bunny's been around for a while, so she keep has. going down. Let's keep scrolling. Yes. So they were with the Bidens. There's Geek Bunny, but they called him, especially behind Trump, like freaked out bunny. Like, look at that facial expression on the Yeah, bunny. he looks nervous. He looks nervous. That was my face from all 2016 <laughs> to 2020. Liz didn't have to put on a costume. No, that was me. That was her actual face for four years. <laughs> Including from November to let's say January 6, <laughs> 2022. I'm still kind <laughs> of stuck. There, there's Freaked Out Bunny. He's there with Melania. Let's keep going. So, uh, there's the first year Freaked Out Bunny. Freaked out. Yeah, yeah, he, Look at know. that shot. Yeah. That's why the that's why oh. the White House photogs get extra money. Like, let's do a beautifully framed <laughs> oh. shot. Ugh, that's a bad angle for Trump. It's really bad. It's a bad angle it's for a, him. I mean, there's not many good ones, but that's a really. Ugh. Is there a bad angle for, for Freak That Bunny, though? I think he doesn't have a bad angle in him. No. <laughs> so keep going. Um, and so Maura asked a very good question. Yeah, what is the... i got to Google this more. I know. We kind of went into it yesterday, but that's a good question. Origin of Easter um, Bunny. I'm going to look this up as you keep looking at shots. Yeah, that was the masked bunny last year. That was year. the masked bunny. That's a big mask. Um, and then we... Yeah, so we there seemed to be a rotating cast. This seems like a new one. This seems like a bunny we have not seen before. This is the with third the blue bunny. eyelashes. So this bunny the with like the eyeshadow. cute little dots. Polka um, dot. They call it like flirty bunny or really? kind of cute bunny. But it's got the it's got the um, freckles. It's freckled bunny. Got it. So you go back and like if you keep scrolling, guys, and that this is what's so crazy with the recipe thing is they literally. <laughs> went through Getty or something and went through every buddy photo <laughs> mm-hmm. going back 50 years at the White House. Really? And they're like, oh, then they put like Freckled Bunny in a dress. Then they took, and the, here's Freckled Bunny without Wait, a dress. Freckled Bunny, has Freckled Bunny naked. At, the oh. Obamas didn't dress Freckled Bunny. Oh, gosh. Freckled Bunny got closed during the Bush administration. You see that there. Oh, that's a nice little blazer she yeah. had on. I like that. Uh, I like that color. There, uh, one of the uh, freaked out uh, glasses freaked out bunny, bunny. No only pants. Has a top, only has a shirt, no, no pants. pants. No bad. Okay. It feels like a it is a big, there's a W. Yeah. It's a good photo. So it's always that's tough. A good photo. It's always tough because you see what happened during the Bush administration. I know. But and then, then he has this photo. That's how he got away with it. And that's how <laughs> war criminals do it. Um, hey, oh, that's cute. That's a nice, that's a big bunny. Bill yeah. Clinton is a tall man. Yeah. That's a big bunny. Big bunny. That's then a, Hillary's back there. Hillary, wow, Hillary's pants. there again. Again, no pantsless bunny. Now, this is interesting. Oh, I don't like This bunny that showed one. up once, they claim. That's the eyes are too small. And, There's and something going on. Natural, here. natural headline. What a flop! What a like, flop! Literally, the that bunny never showed up. Now look at these bunnies. Oh, that's these a scary are, one. What's the one on the right doing? Why are right? his ears? Thank you, Bush. This is Bush. Uh, Bush forty one. Uh, mm. They got rid of those bunnies. It yeah. looks like the Clintons brought the softer bunnies, including a uh, scared glasses bunny. Got it. Into the effect. Oh, he, um, I like that one. I like that one. There's Nancy Reagan in the bunny. The ears are very horizontal. Yeah. I'm into. This is Trish uh, Nixon, the daughter of Richard Nixon. Now, That's look what's happening unsettling. here. The clown. Oh, I can't even look at that. That's and the bunny. too scary for me. The 70s were, f- were scary. That's no, no, I don't like that. That's a um, scary movie. Maura is giving us some nice history on the right here, guys, in the chat. The Easter Bunny came from German immigrants. <laughs> Incidentally. Wait, what? <laughs> German immigrants came to America in the 1700s and brought the Easter Bunny with them. I did not know that. Let me give you another thing. Because I looked into the groundhog with the tradition of the groundhog seeing the shadow. That also came to us via German immigrants. The German immigrants in America gave us a lot of the traditions that we now know for several hundred years, including the groundhog. Um, Christmas tree. Um, They brought the Christmas tree to America and they apparently brought the Easter Bunny as well. So thank you, early German immigrants. You what has America know. done? What, what is an original about what, anything that we do? We're a nation of immigrants. God, there we go. That's the most yeah, original thing about And us. America That's has it. given us faux pas, the beverage, something that is made in America here. Um, but it's def- it's not. I mean, margaritas. I don't think our Amer- I don't think America's gonna take no, for margaritas. No, we can't but- take margaritas. But we can take canned margaritas with a French name. Yes, there we go. There we go. That yeah. works. Um, Margaritas no more. Grace says no more free spawn con. Nope. 
We're giving oh, we're giving too, that too, just too much free space. Okay, according to Grace. got it. We're gonna hide Take it that back. Delete it. that from the permanent feed. Yeah, everybody. Delete it from the No, we just we love we're we're supporting a friend, really. We're supporting we're friend. supporting a friend. Yeah, um, and media all support us. Independent media, etc. Um, but like it's so interesting. So the, you know that there were enough people speaking German where there was a debate in the early Continental Congress about German being an official language here in the United States. No way. Yeah. And why? Who was for it? Uh, a whole bunch of German immigrants who lived German in uh, Pennsylvania at the time. Wow. In fact, there's a copy of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution in German in Berlin and also here in the U.S. Wow! Yeah, you have a lot of German. Is, I, this is, is why you take me to for this. Or is this just in this your is head what, at all this times? This is why Slade come to camera one. Yeah. I would like to be on the trivia show that you host. <laughs> this weekly. is your audition tape. And this is my audition tape. <laughs> I'm right here. I have an audition tape. I know things about. 18th century America and our knowledge of the German language. Yeah. And I hope that that makes me a candidate for yeah. the show. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and, perfect. Slade is going to see this. And people are saying, what if, yeah, what if the Germans adopted a, about America? Nothing. And also, we have Hamidas, democracy, which we made. We were, we were one of the first on modern democracy. Okay. Got then it. the French take it. Mm -hmm. So we go. So we have the Greeks. Mm -hmm. Then we take a break from democracy for mm -hmm. like a millennia. Then we go. The French go. And then the Germans, until Otto von Mismar gets the act together, you have the early Weimar Republic. We know how that ended sure. with uh, uh -huh. a certain Ooh. dictator. Uh -huh. And then they come back. So I would say we gave the Germans back democracy. Got it. And then we ruined it. Um, I feel like we're <laughs> ruining it right now. Um, for everybody. On the show or generally no, speaking? No, no. I don't feel personally responsible for democracy being ruined you don't. in this country. I'm not okay. even from here. I didn't start it. But I think. You didn't start democracy. I didn't start democracy. You just benefit from it. I. And you try to make it better. I do try to make it better, yeah. and that's why they gave me green cards because they recognize that I'm at least I'm trying. Is, a is, for effort. Is Nomi still on from Tel Aviv? It's got to be so. closer to one a.m. there. She's I've seen her wasted. commenting. Thank you for being our thank um, you our viewer yes. farthest away from yes. New York. From <laughs> you, from the studio. Um, and uh, this has been a good this good been Tuesday. Fun. High five. High five. Good uh, show. Thank you, everybody. Thank Thanks. you for the chat. Lovely, engaging as always. It's been good. You're the best part. And of the starting show. tomorrow. According to Grace, no free spawn con. No free spawn con. Okay. You got pay. And tip your Griffin. Tip Griffin. <laughs> tip tip if you feel comfortable tipping. Yes. And tip your um, local Griffin. This, yeah, tip your just, local... I have that agita when I see that iPad now. I'm like, oh. it's a, it's, don't look at me when I don't look when at, I say the no tip. Yeah. Don't look at me. But also, yeah. Yeah. There's a whole Seinfeld tip jar episode, you know, when you, like, you, you tip and they don't see you. Yeah. So I do like that now there's evidence when you do it. It's true. But. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's there's a lot that's going on already when we're in interactions in everyday life. Let's not have one more thing. So the government should pay. Not the government. We should pay. We should take money and give it to people who do shitty jobs. Brennan asked a good question. For everyone who feels uncomfortable tipping, ask yourself why. Mm. That's that's your that's your moral question for this evening. There we go. Um, thank you guys. Thank you, Liz. Thanks. Thanks, Mosh. Um, and we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.